Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Guys, and welcome to today's episode. Last week, I visited a scrapyard in a farm field full of farm fresh classic cars. And in it was a 1979 Mustang 5 liter Fox body with a 4 speed manual transmission. Fox body Mustangs are very desirable, and this one does not deserve to sit here and rot in a field. So, we're going to bring it back home today. Also, I've been given a product from Heimvision to install at the store an extra security camera. So follow along as we get the Mustang back home and install a new camera. There she is, a rusty Stang. Oh yeah, she's a little crusty. Right, anything can be fixed if you're motivated enough. Well, I've run into a little issue. We were, well, my plan, not we, my plan was to put it in the garage, close it up and have it nice and safe and sound. Problem is, uh, they lost the keys along the way. The steering is locked a little bit. So they have some sort of idea uh, on tying it off, chaining it off to this big old apple tree here so that it'll somewhat pull it straight, I suppose, and then drag it off the trailer. Uh, this ought to be interesting. ramps are down. The idea is you what, chain it to a tree, strap it to a tree, and then pull it forward and it drags it off the trailer. And then while it's still somewhat attached, they can pull it off to my parking pad back there. Creative. You do what you gotta do. This is farmer ingenuity in action here. Well, step one, it's off. Okay, now it is chained onto the trailer. Watch the whole rear end of this car come flying off. Actually, the other side isn't as rusty as this one. Driver's side always seems to get a little bit more use. We'll do a walk around of the car after we get it positioned here. And now they're towing it back. The wheel cranked a little, it might just straighten itself out somewhat. Well, the wheels turn. At least the brakes aren't all seized up on it. There we go. That's probably even fine right there, guys. That's good. Right on the pad. That's some talented, uh, farmer work you guys had going on there and you might be asking yourself Alex what have you done why did you buy this rusty crusty old Mustang when you're not even done your current project car well the reason I bought it is that a the price was right and B it's pretty rare it's a five liter factory four-speed car and even though it's in this kind of condition Fox body Mustangs are very collectible so it might be something that maybe I don't fix but I'm sure I'll be able to find somebody who's gonna want it. Very desirable car, and you don't wanna leave something like that sitting in the field. That said, let's have a look and just see what I bought here, uh, get an idea of the overall condition. Well, on the plus side, it's got all its glass. The suspension is sitting more or less right. It rolled. <laughs> um, not only does it have all its rims, it's got extra rims in the back. So for the Side over here, I noticed was missing the center cap. There's an extra center cap inside. So it's got all the factory rims. This side isn't as bad as the other. Definitely looks better when it's not sitting in a field. I said the driver's side always seems worse, but this, the, the rocker isn't all falling apart. The Cobra decals on there, nice. It obviously requires a full restoration. 
And I can see the air cleaner inside. But what makes this car extra special isn't the fact that it's a Mustang. I mean, yeah, it's a Mustang, that's cool. It's the fact that it's a Cobra uh, and it's got a manual transmission. So sporty option, not many cars had. Factory four-speed car would make this kind of fun to drive around. Ooh, need a little bit of oil on that door. Let's have a look under the hood. The egg crate grill is uncracked. It's got some moss starting on it from sitting outside. That's faded out, but it's not cracked or anything. I'm sure you can get replacement parts for these cars. There's a little Mustang logo right there. Really oxidized. Poor little pony. Let's open the hood. Fake hood scoop. I guess they gave it a little bit of room for the air cleaner maybe, but nope. That's just for looks. Doesn't do anything. Okay, let's have a look. Looks like this hood actually might have come off another vehicle at some point. Because it's uh, burgundy on this side. So maybe they had uh, swapped out the hood. But that is the correct 5 liter engine. Does not look like it's run in a while. And I haven't got a, uh, a wrench on that crank to try and turn it over. But I'm going to go ahead and say it's probably going to need a rebuild. Serpentine belt is off. But it's there. I mean, that's the important thing. It's got its engine. It's a factory five liter car. We've got, uh, you know, it's not terribly rusty. Like the, uh, the body mounts aren't rusted out. Sometimes you can get rust around there and that becomes a problem. It's doable. I mean, it's definitely doable. It's just whether somebody wants to do it or not. Yeah, I'm gonna look at the inside. Let's go have a look inside the car. This would look really sharp in a nice bright color with a black hood with the, uh, they put the nice decal right on the, the hood there. They had them in kind of like this electric looking blue or yellow. Silver is pretty subtle. This would have been very similar colors to the uh, pace car, the Indianapolis pace car that they used around that time. Sunroof. Look at this, we've got a little bit of some pinholes and rust starting around there. But repairable. I mean, the fact it has a sunroof is pretty cool. You can see the back seat is there. It's just folded flat. And doesn't look to be too bad, actually. That seat's probably half decent. We got air cleaner sitting right there. How many miles? Or in this case, it'd be kilometers around it. 12,502, that's probably 112,502, or 212, or five, maybe it's gone over three or four times, I doubt it, it's, it's probably 112,000, I think we, you know, I think most of this wear that we're seeing, as you look at the door panels, they're fine, I'm not seeing 200,000 miles worth of use out of these door panels, I should say that's kilometers too, I think most of the damage that's occurred here is a result of uh, sitting. It's been sitting and the seats, seat bottom split. There's been mice. I'm not gonna get too deep into this car because my allergy is gonna get all crazy. It's gonna need a headliner in a, in a bad way. But, you know, this could be a really cool car with a little bit of effort. Notice the dashboard isn't cracked at all. The steering wheel is, but there are people, well, you can do one of two things. One, you can put a steering wheel cover on it. That's the cheapest fix. The other, you can pay people to actually, what they do is they dremel or, or put a groove, like a V groove around the steering wheel here, and they will fill and repair these damaged cracks and portions. This would be a little bit trickier to do because it has that wood grain inlay, but um, that is repairable. Or you just find one off a parts car that's better. Let's see, what other options does this have? Looks like it has, uh, yeah, cruise control. Uh, does it have, looks like it might have, okay, it's got the hazards, does not have telescopic steering, has a sunroof. But I mean, heck, this would be a really fun car. This would be a fun car for my son, Steven, if he was, if it was in better shape. I bet he'd love something like that all fixed up driving down the road.
I also have been offered a product to try out and I thought this would be a nice crossover because we want to make sure there's security on site while we're doing construction. And although I've got a great system in the store, there's not a whole lot outside for the yard. But that's all about to change today because we have the Heimvision outdoor security camera that I'm going to be installing today. This is a wireless camera. Um, we're going to be putting it outdoors because it is waterproof as well and it's app enabled so it'll send me messages if there's any activity on site and that's just what I need so if I'm at home and see some activity I can see what's going on. So we're going to do a little uh, product opening demonstration and setup of this camera and see what it's like. Follow along. Some of the cool features with their camera, one it's Wi-Fi so it'll just attach to our system. It's outdoor, which means it's gonna be waterproof. You just mount it very easily up on the wall and it sends its signal indoors. And it's got two-way audio. So if you get a notification from them and you can see that someone's in your yard and they shouldn't be, you can actually go on and say, hey, get out of my yard. Uh, it has floodlights, a siren warning system, uh, has local cloud storage support. So it's actually pretty cool system this intelligent motion detection means it kind of learns what type of activity it is whether it's a bird or an animal it learns that that's what it is and it won't send you a signal unless you see like a human or a car so really cool feature unless you're getting robbed by a bird and then you might have some trouble uh so first things first we're going to download the heimlink app on from the app store and we're going to get this out of the box and start getting it set up it came in a uh, yeah, very nice little turquoisey blue box. Kind of retro, reminds me of the Tiffany blue. Very cool color. We'll unpack that, get it open up. Okay, let's see what we got inside. Our dedicated and friendly customer care team will work at full stretch to put a smile back on your face. Well, what if I'm unhappy, unhappy about other things in life in general? I wonder if they'll help me out with that. Maybe if I stub my toe or something. Either way, it's nice to know that they've got customer support. Got a little user manual here too. And there it is. Oh yeah, that looks professional. Looks like a, if I saw that hanging on the side of a building, I'd go like, okay, this place means business. We've got the camera. And we've got the box and that would have the antenna and some of the other bits in it, so get this guy unpacked, opened up, and see if I can figure out how to do the install here myself. Okay, I was reading the instructions before it can get installed. You have to make sure that it syncs to your Wi-Fi. To do that, I'm going to plug the LAN cable right into my Wi-Fi router, so it'll read that. We're going to discover it on my phone, which it'll send a signal to, and uh, once the Wi-Fi and everything is all hooked up, then I can actually think about screwing it onto the wall. But a couple things have to happen before then, so I'm going to crawl down over there where my Wi-Fi box is and we're gonna see if we can make this happen. They've got the camera all plugged in and a little voice came through it that wasn't mine. It has its own voice. Uh, it told me to configure the camera. To do that, I have to go onto their uh, onto the app store and download it because I'm using an, an Apple product right now. So Heimlink, I guess we'll do the Heimlink maneuver here and I'll download that and uh, we'll get that app installed and configure this camera. Okay. Plugged it into my network. I'm gonna disconnect it now because it should be on Wi-Fi. It says it's on Wi-Fi, it thinks it's on Wi-Fi. Let's see if it keeps working if I unplug it. So I have to move it actually somewhere where there isn't a connector. And I believe that as long as I have power and Wi-Fi, I should be okay. For install on this particular camera, the best use I had for it was to show the backyard. Now I'm in the old porch. We've got glass here, so it'll be nice and waterproof and a good view of the yard. So I'll be able to see who's coming and going when I'm not here. The handy thing to have, and to get power to it, I basically just use one of those little adapters with the plug-in on my light, and did the trick. Now that it's in place, all I have to do is open up the app, and I have a great view of the yard. You can have all sorts of different features on it, which I like. It's a good clear image, it's color. Uh, you can go down to the bottom here, there's a spot to record, go into the iCloud album, you can turn your light for the camera on and off. It has LED lights, really powerful actually. So um, really great image, there's all sorts of other features on here too. Uh, you can talk to people if you want to say something to them, tell them to get off your property. <laughs> um, yeah, it's pretty handy. It's nice to have a little extra camera for the shop. I'll probably install a few of these around the building. We've got lots on the inside already. It's always good to have some on the outside as well. So that's it, a busy day. I'm back home now, relaxing. I'm gonna spend some time with my wife and just enjoy the evening. Camera is all set up at the shop. 
Mustangs in the backyard. And uh, now all I have to worry about is finding someone who wants a five liter Mustang project car. But uh, since I've listed it a couple days ago, we've already got lots of interest in it. So fingers crossed that I won't have it for too long and uh, hopefully it'll be a good investment. Either way guys, thank you so much for watching. I uh, appreciate you watching these videos. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more. And we'll see you all soon. Bye for now. Thank you.